Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and in this video, I want to again talk about competitive programming. So in my previous video, when I talked about competitive programming and encouraged you about, first of all, learning a subject and then learning the data structure, then only you can participate in that. A lot of people just assume that I'm talking about hackathon. And yes, I might have miscommunicated a little bit about the hackathons and the difference between competitive programming and hackathon. So this is a take two on competitive programming so that I can take an example and then can put my point whatever I wanted to say in this video. So in this video, I will be presenting a simple, very simple example that is usually done in competitive programming. And also I would like to talk about the difference between the competitive programming and a hackathon and how these two are almost together and uh, how you can understand all of them. So this is take two on competitive programming with example. First and foremost, I might have miscommunicated in the previous video. I do accept it. After watching it again, I realized that, yeah, it was a little bit confusing that what I wanted to say, I said it, but didn't make a difference on competitive and hackathon. So here is your video. Okay. Now, first and foremost, as always, I wanted to do, I wanted to put in sample example so that you can understand what kind of questions are there in competitive programming. Now, after that, I'm going to discuss that what's the goal or the essence of competitive programming, the difference between competitive programming, a hackathon, as well as some of the other names that you will usually see like code turfs and things like that. So first and foremost, promise me one thing you will not get depressed by seeing this problem. This is like the most, uh, one of the easiest problems that you will see in every competitive programming competition or maybe on a tons of website. But some people I have seen in the past get really, really depressed by seeing this and assuming, hey, I, I don't know programming. Even after making a couple of projects, they see this and they say, oh my goodness, I, I have absolutely no idea what they are trying to say in this problem. So I'm really a bad programmer. No, you are not. Since you haven't prepared for this kind of problems, that is why this is looking alien to you. So promise me you will not get depressed by seeing this problem. So watch this first. Okay, so I hope you have paused the video there and have tried to read the problem set. Now this is one of the common problem and is the problem that was presented uh, to filter out the crowd in the recent hackathon where uh, I went out. Okay, so let's come back and talk about what is competitive programming and what is hackathon, what is code turf. Now, all these different names are a way to make programming a sport. Now, it is something like you are saying, hey, that is a code. No, that is a program. Now, again, fighting between these two things, yes, they might be a little bit different according to the definitions, but Fighting again, is this a code or is this a program on a simple function is not at all a good thing. So first and foremost, these all things are made so that programming can become fun. Okay, that's one thing cleared out. Now moving on to the difference between competitive programming, hackathons and code turfs or probably hundreds of other names. Let's go there. Now the competitive programming is actually the essential step in usually the hackathons because some of the good hackathons that are being launched by a variety of big companies they are not just everybody can show up and can do their codings and whatever the problem is going to be fetched to them. The first round or the first hurdle of most of the hackathon is competitive programming. So that's why I consider them personally as just one set. If you are preparing for a hackathon, competitive programming is the first step. Then the second step might be uh, defining the problems in a simpler way. And the third step is actually building to it. So what I have been to the hackathons, these hackathons include all three parts. That's why I consider them as equally. But some of the recent websites uh, like HackerRank and all these host competition where they do have certain test cases where you can have a problem set like this, which is seen, which you have seen just a moment ago, and you can write various uh, programs for them. Now, again, uh, if you are thinking that, hey, this is an easy peasy program and I can just write a simple solution for that, then yes, it's OK. That means you have a full understanding of programming and projects as well as data structure and algorithm. And you are able to understand that that's that can happen. But usually that's a rare case. Again, uh, competitive programming, code terms or hackathon. These are all ways to make fun. And if somebody is playing them just for fun, obviously he's there to show off his skill. 
it is totally okay for the beginners to feel like hey i don't know anything about them but eventually when you play a lot of these kinds of challenges it becomes like normal stuff they always try to do like it's a simple it could have been a simple question but they try to just somehow integrate that into real life situation and make them much more complex so that's the most essence of competitive programming so again my point in the previous video was you always have two-step solution whether you want to prepare for these certain kind of i call them level one hackathon or level one or competitive programming or level one hackathon is first of all you need to have understanding of the subject it can be c plus plus it can be android java python whatever that is second is if you have built some of the real life projects they always always do help and the third thing is your data structure and algorithm so i keep this one as one part one part two and the data structure as a separate because it deserves its own big spot so this is what i wanted to say in the previous video and i hope now with this video it is much more clear for you again just to quickly summarize it you can consider a competitive programming hackathon and code turfs as a separate event and uh, some in most of the big events these are like the levels of a hackathon to reduce down the amount of crowd that is coming to them usually it happens in first of all uh, there is like this kind of examples are there first of all you have to define a problem now that's is the most toughest part and where most of the crowd get filtered out and then you have to write a solution for that and based on how optimized and how many test cases it can pass on uh, you get selected to the next round and finally in the third round you are presented with a comparatively simpler problem and then you have to write an exact code or an application for that so that's how usually hackathon goes on I can understand the hackathons that you might have attended might be in just a university and not be that much of the big scale so I highly recommend you to move on to these hackathons like hosted by the Google or Facebook you'll see that uh, when everybody takes part they just put a certain this kind of a challenge uh, onto their website and say hey uh, everybody who can understand this and can submit the optimized solution will get an access to the round two so where is this round two coming up from from these kinds of problems okay so again let me be very clear if you're not able to understand this problem it's totally fine it's totally okay don't get depressed if you're not able to understand it if you are able to understand it congratulations you can move into competitive programming uh, for a few while but i'm gonna still say uh, don't get involved in too much of the competitive programming once you have understood few things of it then obviously move into the real world building application that are gonna serve you a lot better compared to just keep on stucking around with the competitive programming so that's it again if you haven't watched the previous video go ahead watch that and in case you have enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up share it with among your friends so that they can also get some of the upgrade in their existing knowledge that's it for this video hit that subscribe button we are geeks here we talk all day long about programming tech design all stuff like that and i hope you haven't forgot to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it come on guys go ahead hit that subscribe button and i'll surely get you up in the next video